And welcome, ladies and gentlemen, a call to order Clackamas County Board of Commissioners business meeting this October 6, 2016. The first thing we do is make sure everybody's here. Mr. Krepp, will you do that? I will do that, uh, Mr. Chair, and good morning, Commissioners. Uh, we are joined this morning with Mr. Chris Story from County Council. And then to my left, serving as clerk of the board today, is Mr. Kevin Moss. So, Commissioner Bernard. Here. Commissioner Smith. Here. Commissioner Savas. Here. Commissioner Schrader. Here. Chair Ludlow. Here, would you all please rise and join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. And we have a presentation, Mr. Krupp. Yes, we do. I'm going to invite uh, Mr. Greg Geist and uh, Ron Warenga up uh, to the uh, table here. This is a presentation on the River Health Stewardship Grant Program. It doesn't look like you, Greg. Uh -uh. <laughs> no. no, sir. Uh, good morning, Commissioners. I'm Ron Waringa um, with Water Environment Services, and um, Greg's going to let us give the presentation today. I have with me Gail Shalom, who's uh, the manager of this program. And we're here to today, we appreciate your time this morning. Um, we're, we're here today to talk to you about the uh, River Health Stewardship uh, Grant Program. Um, this is a program that we started several years ago to offer grants to organizations outside of West, the county and our district, to uh, not-for-profits, businesses, property owners um, that wanted to help us further our watershed protection goals, do projects like watershed and stream restoration as well as environmental education. Um, we'll go through that program today, and Gail will actually do uh, most of the description of what the program is. We go ahead. Um, but I want to tell you, you know, briefly about what the program is. This this uh, program was started in 2013. It offers um, up to $30,000 per organization per year uh, for grants that do, as I said, um, watershed protection and environmental education. Um, we. The, pro the program uh, has, uh, we solicit proposals every year from folks and we have an internal team that reviews those proposals, scores the grants, and then we offer funding uh, to the amount that's budgeted. Um, the program was started in 2013 uh, by a, a board resolution that authorized the West Director to administer this um, grant program. Funding is allocated during the budget cycle each year, and there's a provision in the in the, the board resolution um, that says that we as a department will report on the performance of the program to the board, and we chose to do that this year at a presentation, at a, at a meeting, so we appreciate your time to hear about it, and I'll kick it over to Gail, and she'll fill in some of the details. Okay. So, some reasons why we do this program. First of all, it helps us to meet our state and federal permit requirements for water environment services. But also, it really helps us to maximize our resources, our staff time. We have limited staff. We would not be able to get all these projects done on our own without giving out the grants. Um, in addition, it's a great way to get the community involved, getting people to come out and volunteer and help 
um, enhance an area that's right in their neighborhood and get to appreciate what a great resource they have right in their neighborhood, uh, we think that that encourages long-term stewardship. Uh, we also can take advantage of the strengths of these grantees. Some of them have very strong community presence, community relationships. Some of them provide matching funding, so our dollars just go that much farther. Um, and they can also work more easily on private properties than we can as a government agency. So for those high priority stream reaches that are privately owned, it's really a good way to get that accomplished. Um, you know, finally, it's just because the streams need help, and this is a good way to do that. Um, and it really just expands on what we can accomplish on our own when we work together. There is quite a wide variety of groups <coughs> that are eligible for the grants. Basically, it's um, anybody who's a registered business or a registered nonprofit with the state. A lot of times, these groups will partner with the private property owners who would not be eligible on their own. So here's some information on the grants that we've awarded so far. Uh, this, these numbers include this year, this fiscal year, so the grants we've just given out that people are working on now. We have given a, awarded a total of 60 grants to 18 different organizations. By the end of this fiscal year, it'll add up to about $800,000. Um, this fiscal year, our budget is $240,000. And the funds come from surface water fees that are paid by property owners in Clackamas County Service District 1. So what have our grantees accomplished? In th the first three years of the program, the majority of the work has been restoration on the ground projects. They have restored uh, vegetation on over 100 different sites, covering 75 acres and about six and a half miles of stream. They've also controlled invasive plants on about 48 of those acres, and they've planted 6,400 trees and 21,000 shrubs. <clears throat> In addition to that, the grants have also gone to support a few watershed studies. Uh, in addition to on, the on-the-ground projects, we've also, our grantees have also done some education and outreach projects. <clears throat> we've funded 21 different education and outreach projects. <clears throat> These are um, either <clears throat> projects that have gone to educate students in watershed science, <clears throat> excuse me, um, or provided public outreach events. And some of the commissioners, some of you have attended <coughs> some of those events as well. Um, Commissioner Savas has gone to the Rock Creek Watershed Wide event a few years in a row, and we had Commissioner Schrader last year at Discover Rock Creek. Um, so between the volunteers who've helped in the restoration projects and the education and the outreach projects, our grantees have reached over 13,000 students and volunteers. Here are some of the groups that have received our grants. You can see we fund a lot of watershed councils, other nonprofits, businesses, and some educational groups as well. And again, this was an informational report so we could update you on our progress and we'd like to take any questions you might have and we also welcome your comments or your suggestions on the program. Commissioner Smith. Well, thank you. I went out and planted some trees along the stream restoration. My first year that I became a commissioner and it's something that's not foreign to me because I'm a farmer and I was raised in this area and the thing that I particularly like is the 48 acres where they have removed invasive plants um, and I'm working closely with a, another county organization to try to beef up that um, program and hopefully establish a weed control district, a weed control district state, countywide that we can really work on that. And it'd be wonderful. Um, you know, there's an old Chinese saying that I'm fond of quoting, and it is the best time to plant a tree was 20 years ago. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. You know, it's interesting to see the uh, opportunities of this type uh, on our elevators, inside of our elevators here. Right. And um, certainly if when I was a member of the Key Club at Rex Putnam High School, this was way back in the 60s, we even had this kind of stewardship to, remain, uh, to remove invasive species specifically. We had uh, 
we were working on at an area which is now a park over in Clackamas, and uh, felt very proud about it. Now, they wouldn't let us have a chainsaw, and I really wanted one a couple <laughs> of times because well. take that stuff down. But um, you know, later on when my when my boys became uh, Boy Scouts, we did some plantings up in the forest too. Nothing like wielding a hoe dad when you. Those things are incredible, and they dig a deep hole when you swing them hard. But it's great to see this kind of success and the, the broad spectrum of people who are involved in it. It's great to see, you know, most of these pictures are, are, are appropriately, I think, youthful people, because uh, it's a lot of work sometimes, too, and a lot of mud. But uh, I certainly appreciate the fact that, um, that this has been distributed well. And as you said, we couldn't do the work alone, and this really, and, and uh, I love Clean Rivers, or we love Clean, Clean Rivers. Have they received any money from you? They have not been, they haven't applied for one of our grants, no. Well, they, you we, know. We have I, worked with them in other ways, but. Yeah, no. people may notice uh, their name because they're the ones that do the downriver cleanup, which uh, remove tons of yep. debris, glass, and uh, refuse that was deposited in our rivers or next to them. They do a fantastic job. Maybe that's enough for them. Uh, but uh, they do a great job, too. But it's good to see, the, again, the broad spectrum of people that we're touching with this program. Yeah, Commissioners, oh, you have others. Commissioner Savas. Yeah, I just want to just kind of thank and applaud the staff for, you know, taking uh, a greater role um, in the last six years. I know when I came here, I came here from Oak Lodge Sanitary, and we had a pretty active effort out over there and, um, you know, realized we had six little mini watersheds in our little area. Um, and uh, so learning more about water responsibility, I first took office uh, at the Water District in 2000, you know, that the water in the Clackamas and all the rivers that feed into the Clackamas, that's our drinking water. And, you know, watershed stewardship is extremely important, um, and the health of our rivers is extremely important. So I was glad to see that we've, um, we're, we're improving what we're doing. And some of that's regulatory, obviously. Uh, but best practices is really important and, um, and, and is great, again, uh, to see the youth involved and the excitement. And I think that's why I go to the Rock Creek one, because there's so many kids. Uh, any of them that I, that I can attend, I, I really enjoy that, because I think educating our youth and the importance of our natural resources is extremely valuable. And we really have some real treasures. And I think <coughs> one day when we can see most of and all of and have access to as much of Rock Creek as we can, I think people realize it's one of the secrets of Clackamas County is that watershed. It's just fantastic. So, um, but there's also some sweet, beautiful areas of all of our streams, but the Clackamas especially that we rely upon our drinking water and how important that is to all of us. So thanks for what you're doing and congratulations. Thank you. We also, if I can really quick make a plug for an event, our Rock Creek uh, Confluence event will be coming up in early November and we'll be out there again with, with folks uh, is there, do we have a date yeah, on Yeah, it's November 5th. So November 5th, and you might see a flyer in the elevator, but um, we'll keep you we posted. We might be really pretty busy, some of us. Then. You, you <laughs> might be busy <laughs> today, I, I understand. That, you know? We understand. Yeah. We just, it's more for the audience, so thank yeah. you. <laughs> yeah, and Chair, I left out one thing. I just want to just thank all of the volunteers of all ages for everything that they do, because without their help, there's just no way we could afford and do be as effective as we are. So they, they provide a huge contribution. So just for those that are watching, I don't see anyone here that's a volunteer from the outside side of Clackamas County, but I just want to just give this, take this opportunity to thank them for coming out in droves sometimes, yeah. which is awesome. Yeah, thank you. Thank you very much for the presentation today. You bet. Thank you for your time. Appropriate and timely. All right, Mr. Krupp, we have, uh, oh wait, we have a, we have citizens communication here first, and I'll call up Bob Mahoney and Les Poole. Good morning, commissioners. Uh, my name is Bob Mahoney. I live in Oregon City. Uh, I'm here uh, uh, as a friendly taxpayer and a friend of the commission. Everybody take a deep breath, okay? Because <laughs> I don't mean to, uh, uh, to uh, 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 take a negative subject and turn it into an even more negative subject. But I'm here to t talk about uh, what I perceive uh, to be a, a growing problem in uh, uh, the uh, way that we're handling the um, Tri-Cities uh, situation, the, the water uh, sewerage area. Uh, as a planner of 20 years, I look at this thing as a 
problem to be solved. And there's uh, nothing that we can't do if we all work together. And by that, I'm talking about all of the cities and the county, and I think with the county taking the lead. It's basically a technical problem. It can be a political football. And it, if it uh, develops into even more of a political football that it seems to be heading towards, it's gonna to get nasty. And there, we're talking about tens of millions of dollars, taxpayers' dollars, and we're talking about whether or not this county is going to approach the problem of growth in a controlled manner. Now, planning's one thing, but how we control that planning is another, and it's going to involve taxpayers' money. And essentially, what I'm looking for is leadership from the county to uh, approach this thing with uh, the cities to work together in sort of a summit type of thing. Get everybody together in the same room and say, we got a problem here. We're gonna have tens of thousands of people in the ne next 10 years occupying Clackamas County and how do we provide urban services working together for those people so that we can afford it. And um, if we don't, I, I think it's gonna end up costing us a lot of money. And essentially, I, I, uh, it's not rocket science. I think that we can all sit down together and find out what the other person needs and approach this so that uh, everybody more or less feels that they're participating in a, in a fair, uh, fair manner. And it's, uh, make it transparent, get all the facts and figures out on the table, find out where we're headed, where this thing is taking us. We think that we're in control of it. Don't kid yourself. We're not that much in control of people coming into this well-kept secret called the Pacific Northwest. And um, so uh, I, uh, I would like to see the county take the lead, invite all of the cities that are involved in this, uh, in this uh, watershed area, and find out uh, where we go from here and, and what we can do to help each other. And I guess the light just went on, so that... Well, hang around. Some people want to say some things. <clears throat> Commissioner Savas. Well, thank you, Bob. Glad you came here and brought this uh, brought this matter up. And um, uh, I've been pretty close to this for a long time. And <clears throat> we've actually done precisely what you prescribed, uh, precisely to to the T. And for the very reasons that you outlined. And and frankly, uh, you're right. It's not ten. Well, you're, it's tens of millions of dollars, but it's actually hundreds of millions of dollars of potential savings. Let alone hundreds of millions of dollars um, that could be lost by not working together. And, um, uh, but we've had, you know, I've watched for the last 15, 16 years being involved on the water side of things and districts that, um, you know, people come and go, elected officials come and go, and, and things stir up in one area or one city or another. And uh, we've tried, and I hope that maybe you can make that appeal to uh, this the, the councils uh, right now that, last chose not to participate in that discussion, that very format forum that you described. Uh, we did this in 2008 and realized the common sense element of it that we could save over $300 million by working together, um, that the taxpayers would need to pick up the difference. And uh, so we had a plan to move forward and now we're at that point in time to do that. But the last couple of years has been kind of rough and um, you know, some better cooperation and maybe speaking to the city councils of Gladstone and Oregon City would be helpful at this point in time. Commissioner Smith. Thank you, uh, Bob. Um, <clears throat> your comments are timely. Um, I'd like to address a couple of things. I as far as planning for controlled growth, I think this board has made a decision to expand with the digesters. And uh, actually our cost is coming in much less expensive than what we had once thought. And I think there is no doubt that uh, the county can run uh, the sewer systems for Clackamas County cheaper than any one city. 30 years ago, uh, the uh, fathers of this county came to Clackamas County and asked us if you would please do a sewer system for the cities of Westland, Oregon City, and Gladstone, reform the tri-counties. Um, and it's still much cheaper and much more efficient uh, that the county operated within its own, um, it has its own fees and tax base. So um, you're right about that. And we are mindful 
uh, of the planned growth that's coming, the growth and hopefully it will be planned. But like you say, we don't control who comes here to live. Uh, thank you for that point. And as far as making it transparent, I think this board has gone ab far above and beyond anything we could do. We are not the boards that have met in secret, excluding others. There are others out there who have met in secret about this and excluded us from that. I just want the public to know that. Mm -hmm. uh, we have offered to have a summit many times through Oregon Solutions, a neutral third party, for people to come together, and they have refused. But we are going to continue in these efforts. Uh, you're probably not going to see anything, quite frankly, until after the election, because we got an email from one of the city members saying, we're not doing anything until after the election. Okay, that's not that far off. We can live with that. But I can assure you that uh, we are working in the best interests of Clackamas County citizens to manage growth, keep sewer rates down, and, make, and frankly, to make sure people can flush their toilets. <laughs> the, um, I, I'm the sewer liaison um, to um, all the sewer um, committees, and one of which is the Regional Wastewater Capacity Committee. Now, that's made up of representatives of Milwaukee, Happy Valley, Gladstone, Oregon City, and West Lynn. In addition to that, there's two representatives from unincorporated because the plant in Oregon City serves 37% 30, 30, of the people they serve are unincorporated Clackamas County. That committee has been meeting for almost two years now and um, really wrestled with uh, the best technology. Now, sewer digesters uh, are, are pretty commonplace stuff, but heretofore we thought we might need up to two of them and the cost could get up to $55 million. Recently, <coughs> our director of West said that that will be dropped by some $20 million, which should mean a great deal to the ratepayers. In Tri-Cities, the ratepayers pay, we, uh, we charge the cities our wholesale rate. As an example, Oregon City, uh, it's around $21.5. Then, uh, then Oregon City adds $29 for their own purposes. You know, they have some sewer lines that are leaking pretty bad, and hopefully they're working on those. But the wastewater capacity group has recommended this body, and we have not made a decision on it as of yet, that we go with anaerobic digesters. Now, this is not a new science, but two of the members, um, being from Gladstone, Oregon City, insisted on a really unknown science called the Janicki burner. Uh, Janicki burner is, is third world so far. It has never been proven or approved in the United States, and it does have some emissions that I'm sure the DEQ would be concerned about. They insisted on that, and that we do that, and the rest of the body, all of them, except for Gladstone, Oregon City, said no. That's when those two representatives got up and walked out of the meeting. Then they called a meeting of the cities only, not the unincorporated, together. And you talk about, like Tootie was saying, transparency. There wasn't any. They, they didn't call them public meetings. Um, we were uninvited. Specifically, I was uninvited. And the unincorporated representatives were uninvited as well. At those meetings, those two bodies, Gladstone and Oregon City, asked those cities, hey, you want to break away with us and get out of this Tri-Cities thing? And every one of those councils that met said no. So now they are the two still saying that they went out of Tri-Cities. I'm, I'm sorry to hear that. Maybe the elections will change that. The only city that has yet to, to receive a presentation from Mr. Guys at uh, Water Environmental Services is Oregon City. I wrote them a letter yesterday, and they did agree, as Tootie said, to hear that presentation only after the election. Now, I don't know what people think might be changing at the election time, but in all probability, it'll continue the same. But we've done an outstanding job, like Tootie said, uh, for 30 years of uh, taking care of wastewater in this county. And consolidation really is the way to go. You look at the successes of Washington County, and you know that, uh, that they've really done well with that. So, you know, we will continue on in the, in the regional to hone down the costs of this, and eventually it will come to this board, and the board will make this the final decision. But we're on a critical path that is quite tight. Because as you said, the county continues to grow no matter what happens. You know, I think Paul said the other day there's 111 people moving to the Portland metropolitan area every day. So where are they going to stay? What are they going to do? And do they flush toilets? Mm. So the point of the matter is, is that we will continue on and, um, and uh, with our duties here. And we're sorry that these two cities are acting like this, but they are not supported by the rest of the, of the people we serve. And we believe the ratepayers feel that way too. Uh, you know, the only time a ratepayer feels, uh, you know, 
sorry about the, uh, paying that rate is if it gets too high, which it is not. It's, uh, regionally, it's the best rate around. Or the, if their toilet doesn't flush. And so we're trying to make sure on that critical path that we do meet those deadlines and are able to supply the excellent service that we currently provide to people. The thing that concerns me is that the issue may become uh, more uh, of personalities than of technology. Technology, uh, you know, water's still going to run downhill. Yeah. Depending, doesn't care who's the chairman or who's who's on the commission. Right. And then the other thing is, uh, if you can resolve the issue, or what appears to be the issue, of representation, so that everybody feels like they got something. That somebody's listening. People just want to be heard, whether they're elected or whether they pay the bills. Just I got to have a place at the table. They want to feel that you know, they're invited, and uh, that's I think the role of uh, good government is to make sure everybody's at the table, and they feel welcome, and they're represented by the people that are elected, and that's that is what appears to be one of the issues, other than the personality issue. Uh, and uh, John, you're a hard man to ignore. I mean, you walk into a room, you take up a lot of space. <laughs> I don't know if that's a compliment or not. But no, no. Okay, we'll, go <laughs> well, I wouldn't want to go to the mat with you. Let me, let me put it that days, way. Yeah, not now. <laughs> but, uh, you know, in a friendly way, you know, we're not all going to be here. Uh, there's no guarantee, you know. Uh, two weeks from now, two months from now, six months from now, there's going to be other personalities involved. I don't want to be ruled by personalities. I want to be ruled by good uh, legislation, you see, and that takes good representation. And, I, would, and, I would say, Bob, that for your edification, I strongly recommend that you look at the, and they're online, the Regional Wastewater Capacity Committee meetings, and you will find out who the bull in the china closet is, and it ain't me, by the way. I'm very subdued at these meetings because I'm just a liaison. I'm not a voter. Well, you're a pussycat. I'm an easy guy. <laughs> Everybody knows me. Yeah. Martha. <laughs> Yeah, I wanted to just say how much I agree with you. It is a technical problem, and uh, essentially um, what I've tried to tell people is it's not about us controlling. When you talk about personalities, it's an issue of control and who's the boss of who now. You know, don't be the boss of me now. You, know, you can kind of see that dynamic. But really what it is is a technical problem, and Water and Environment Services has been institutionalized under the umbrella of the county. It works well. We have excellent engineering staff that know what they're doing. We have great lab technicians that know what they're doing. So my assertion is don't upset that apple cart institutionally because it works well and the people are getting the service they need, which is really all the, the ultimate goal should be that. And I was here the uh, first go around when we were doing Clearwater. And um, that, that became also very political as well. And as it turned out, we maintained uh, the Kellogg plant, which is somewhat problematic. It's an old aging plant. It's going to consistently be needing upgrades. But upgrading the Tri-Cities facility was um, a huge, huge step forward for everyone. And it really was the first steps back then that we took to make sure that the unincorporated areas and all of the cities involved that are growing have the sewer capacity that they need. So there are pretty close relationships between Tri-City and Clackamas County Service District. Number one, that for the benefit of the ratepayers needs to be solid, needs to be maintained. And I do think this commission heading on that critical path <clears throat> to make sure the uh, additional digesters get get built is is really the technical step that needs to happen. I, I think the governance long term can be worked out. Um, yeah, we have we have folks who are a little bit challenging sometimes, but aren't we all? You know, that's the way I see it. Oh well, you know, uh, when you have elected folks, uh, remember it's a tough job to be elected and. Uh, uh, it's, it's a tough job to be elected, and you have to have a strong enough ego to withstand the slings and arrows, but you have to be very careful that your ego doesn't get in the way as well, and that's part of what I think happens. Well, sometimes. you guys are doing a lot better job than people say you are. Oh, so thank you. Let me write that down, will you? <laughs> well, thank you for listening to me, and uh, uh, I just hope there's no Army and Navy behind me, because I tried to, you know, speak as slow as I could, and... And, uh, you must be a Marine. 
<laughs> barely. barely. <laughs> Thank you, Bob. Are we done? I'm, I'm free to go? You're free to go. <laughs> or would you prefer it? We got handcuffs in the back of the room, but, okay. you know, we'll right. go ahead. Yeah. Thank you. Mr. Poole. Uh, good morning, Les Poole. I live here in Clackamas County. Um, I could probably use my three minutes just commenting on some of the things that I just heard, and I do appreciate that gentleman showing up and uh, just reiterating a message we all need. And, and I also want to mention something that, you know, you're all aware of, and, and I want us to make sure the public is aware of, and that is that there were some uh, issues on how Wes was run, Water Environmental Services, and when Greg Geis was hired, um, I thought it was a really good move, and I think he's doing an excellent job. I know he's received a recent award for his efforts, and it gets confusing out there because, as, as Tootie mentioned, what Tri-Cities was, and that's, that, that's three cities, and here we're all really a region, and we're trying to work together and uh, we got some expensive problems, and those problems are hidden under the street. They don't look that expensive, but uh, if you've ever tried to obtain a right-of-way just to run a piece of cable, uh, you, you look at how critical the, the, and how expensive the sewers are and, and what's involved with it. And sewers doesn't just mean your toilet. Of course, it means stormwater runoff. Um, I got my I Love Clackamas County pin on. I want everyone to look at that, because we all love Clackamas County, and, and Martha's right. Um, you know, we all care about it. We all are trying to do the best we can. And uh, uh, when you think about personalities, when that gentleman said something about personalities get in the, getting in the way of, of a dialogue, of course, my mind went to the presidential election, where we're spending hundreds of millions of dollars watching um, just all kinds of things that don't have anything to do with reality. Uh, there's, there's an issue I wanted to bring up, and that is there's a couple of ordinances that the county's been involved in recently, and they're with land use. Uh, one of them is addressing um, and amending the uh, marijuana ordinance for growing, and uh, I think the citizens that have, that have helped keep that on the, on the, on the front, of, out in front of us have done an excellent job of of continuing to uh, address, you know, what's the right, how, how far can we go in regulating marijuana and keep people's neighborhoods and peace of mind with that issue? Um, the recommendations that were made, I think a lot of them are, are gonna hold or pass the legal muster. And I just wanna thank the staff for everything they're doing to deal with that. It's, it was difficult from day one. and. Kind of like the sewer thing, it's not that simple. You've got medical marijuana, you've got recreational marijuana, you've got selling of it, you've got growing of it, and then you've got illegal grows you're trying to address. And uh, the, the ordinance on the, the, to address the nuisance houses and the illegal marijuana grows, um, you know, I've got some concerns about it, but uh, obviously I know why, why it's being done, and again, the, the the issue of how do we address the marijuana and how do we address the illegal drugs and, and of course the meth and the other things that, that are unfortunately part of what's going on in our county, um, real, real important. So I, I will bid you adieu. I appreciate the three minutes and 30 seconds instead of three minutes and one second. <laughs> You're welcome, Les. Well, that's the end of our citizens' comments. Mr. Krupp. Okay, Mr. Chair, we do have a public hearing this morning. It's uh, to consider a board order that uh, would approve a boundary change proposal, number CL16-008, for annexation to Clackamas County Service District number one. And we have Mr. Chris Story from County Council and Mr. Ken Martin, our boundary change consultant, here to uh, talk with you about this. Good morning, commissioners. This is a boundary commission, so while it is a proposal for an annexation into CCSD1, I will remind you that you're not sitting as the governing body of CCSD1, but as the general board of county commissioners who has the authority to uh, weigh in on these boundary matters. This is a, the standard process we typically follow as far as a petition for annexation made by a property owner, and I thought Mr. Martin might enjoy offering you the details of this particular petition. This is this very, sorry, this is a very simple four acre lot. Like many others that have come before you, it's inside the city of Happy Valley. 
Happy Valley receives its services from the district. The district has the services available to this particular property, and we'd recommend approval. All right, commissioners, any questions on this really short presentation? All right, you're going to open the public hearing and ask if anyone wishes to speak on this matter. All right, we'll close the public hearing and ask for a motion. I move we approve the board order for boundary change proposal number CL 16-008 for annexation of Clackamas County Service District number one. Second. All right, motion by Commissioner Savas, seconded by Commissioner Schrader for the discussion. All right, Kevin. Commissioner Bernard. Aye. Commissioner Smith. Aye. Commissioner Schrader. Aye. Commissioner Savas. Aye. Chair Ludlow. Aye. Passes 5-0. That was tough. Yeah, that was a real good one. All right, sure. All right, Mr. Krupp, we have a public discussion item. Indeed we do. I'm going to invite Mr. Dan Chandler up to the table. And this is to consider a resolution that would enact a property tax exemption for surviving spouses of public safety officers killed in the line of duty. Mr. Chandler. Good morning, Dan Chandler, Assistant County Administrator. As Mr. Krupp said, we have here for discussion and adoption a resolution providing a partial property tax exemption for the spouses of public safety officers killed in the line of duty. That would include fire service professionals, including volunteer firefighters, as well as uh, regular and reserve police officers. The county's ability to do this was provided by Senate Bill 1513, uh, which was passed unanimously by the state legislature last spring and signed into law by the governor. The, or the legislation provides that counties uh, may provide by ordinance or resolution an exemption of up to $250,000 of the assessed value of the homestead of the surviving spouse of a public safe, slain public safety officer. If enacted by the Board of County Commissioners, the exemption would apply to all taxing districts in the county. We don't have exact numbers uh, as to whom it would apply to in Clackamas County, if anyone at this time. We know that since 1995, according to the Oregon of Fallen Police and Firefighter Memorials, that around 25 police officers and around 30 fire service professionals uh, have lost their lives in the line of duty. This equates to about 2.75 uh, per year. The cost to the county for any given exemption would be no more than $620 to $750 a year, depending upon whether they were in the urban or rural area of the county. The benefit to a surviving spouse would range from $2,500 a year to $5,200 a year, again, depending on what taxing district combination they were in. Uh, the exemption applies only until the spouse remarries. Uh, a draft resolution was discussed at a policy session on September 20th, at which point the board expressed a desire to implement the full exemption to provide some level of relief to these surviving spouses. The resolution before you today does that, we believe, and I'm happy to answer any questions. So this, let's say there's a, a you know, fallen hero, and they were from um, Callant, Oregon. And when they move to Clackamas County, if that spouse, surviving spouse, moves to Clackamas County, they get that exemption regardless of where they, that officer served. Is that correct? Uh, th that's correct. And, of course, the obverse is obviously true. If the spouse of a fallen public safety officer who, was, uh, who died in Clackamas County moved to another county, the exemption wouldn't apply here as well. So uh, are other counties uh, 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 taking action like we are? I believe we're probably the sixth or seventh county in the state to do it. Um, there's been a, a wave of interest in this uh, beginning in about late July of this year. I think Lane County was the most recent county to do it earlier this month, earlier, actually, mid-September. Excellent. All right, Commissioner, oh, Commissioner Bernard. Well, this, this is an easy one. Hmm. Um, I hope, though, that the legislature will also take up uh, survivors of uh, veterans who have lost their lives in the service of their country. Um, but uh, yeah, and I hope the rest of the counties throughout the Oregon do um, agree to this uh, tax exemption. Um, that's really all I can say. This is really I'm proud to support. Mm -hmm. Well, Mr. Krupp should note that we did, uh, yes, because of the encouragement, I'll call it that, from some, some people to come here and testify that we will take forward legislatively mm -hmm. the question of fallen um, 
servicemen and women, correct? Correct. We are taking that forward because I haven't heard mm -hmm. about our legislative asks of late, but I want to make sure that one is in there. So this is a public discussion. I'm going to open that and call forward uh, Clackamas County Chief Deputy Chris Hoy and Canby Lieutenant George Trope. Good morning, Chair Ludlow, Commissioners. Chief Deputy Chris Hoy here on behalf of Sheriff Craig Roberts. I want to thank you for this resolution supporting families of loved ones uh, who have made the ultimate sacrifice for our communities. Sheriff Roberts and every police chief in Clackamas County have encouraged you to enact this resolution and very much appreciate the speed and commitment with which you have done so. We are fortunate to have a board of commissioners who are full partners in public safety and who stand beside our first responders and their families in these grimace of circumstances. We would prefer that this resolution not be necessary and never be utilized, but sadly, that's not the reality we live in. Thank you for your support of this resolution and, the, and for the families of our fallen heroes. Thank you. Good morning. Just wanted to be here to show support of this resolution and thank you for your support. Oh, you guys. How short can you be? That was great. I mean, it was, uh, it's obviously, like Jim said, it's kind of a no-brainer. You know, I was uh, up at uh, SARCOM a search and rescue uh, conference up up uh, in Damascus the last, a couple weeks ago. And, you know, in addition to our first line people, it is great to have, as was mentioned earlier today, and the fantastic volunteers who take time off of work, invest their own money and equipment, and show up to work alongside those first responders as well. Now, I know this doesn't extend to them, and that's fine so far. But there are a lot of people out there, and certainly our first response, responders are the most important line of defense and offense we have in, in, in collecting people who are lost and, and also people who are deluded and need some correction. But I, again, I appreciate you both showing up. Is there anybody else that wishes to speak on this matter today? All right, I close the public participation portion, and uh, I'll ask for the motion. I move we approve the resolution enacting a property tax exemption for surviving spouses of public safety officers killed in the line of duty. Second. Second. All right, motion made by Commissioner Schrader, seconded by Commissioner Smith, among others. Further discussion? All right, Kevin. Commissioner Smith. Aye. Commissioner Schrader. Aye. Commissioner Savas. Aye. Commissioner Bernard. Aye. Chair Ludlow. Aye. Passes 5 0 as it should. Thank you, gentlemen. Thank Appreciate you. you coming today. All right, I'll ask the clerk to read the consent agenda by title. All right, commissioners, on the consent agenda this week, under Health, Housing, and Human Services, approval of Amendment Number 8 for the Intergovernmental Agreement with the State of Oregon acting by and through its Oregon Health Authority for operation as the local public health authority for Clackamas County and approval of Amendment Number 9 for the Intergovernmental Agreement with the State of Oregon acting by and through its Oregon Health Authority for operation as the local public health authority for Clackamas County. Under our Department of Transportation and Development, a board order establishing a restriction on through traffic on Salmonberry Drive, approval of a materials management grant contract with the Oregon Department of Environmental Quality for improved food donation capacity at the Clackamas Service Center. Under our finance department, approval of amendment number four of contract documents for janitorial services for Clackamas County facilities with TVW Inc. doing business as Tualatin Valley Workshop Inc. Under elected officials, approval of previous business meeting minutes. Under county council, approval of a ground lease with Clackamas County Vector Control District. And finally, under Business and Community Services, approval of Amendment Number 2 to the contract with Summit Strategies, Government Affairs, LLC, for federal representation services relating to the Willamette Falls Legacy Project. And that concludes the consent agenda. All right, Commissioners, you want to pull any of those items and talk about them some more? Duty. Yeah, I don't wish to pull anything. I'd like to make a couple of comments on um, how we're spending our money. Under um, supported a lot... Uh, under janitorial services, we have a contract with a company uh, for supported employment. And that's something I'm very happy to see in this county do because those are people that may not have had an opportunity to become employed because of the circumstances they were either born with or had acquired over their time uh, <clears throat> of living here. Uh, and that's an area um, that I worked passionately on for St. Vincent de Paul 
and Portland Habilitation Services. And um, people criticized me because I used to be a lobbyist. Well, that's what I lobbied for. I lobbied so people with disabilities could have a job and be uh, employed and have pride in the work that they do. And so I'm really happy that the county is spending the money on that. Uh, this next item is uh, we have received monies from the Oregon Health Authority for the WIC and Emergency Preparedness Program, additional monies of $167,000. And I had staff check on this. And I'm very happy to see that a majority of that money will go into the Emergency Preparedness Program of that $167,000. Dollars, 146,000 will go into that program to help uh, staff uh, help our citizens in becoming prepared for the emergency that will someday happen in Clackamas County. I don't want to be alarmist, but I want to thank uh, that uh, money for coming in, and it will be uh, gone to good use. All right. Do we have a motion? I move we, I move we approve the consent agenda. Second. All right, motion by Commissioner Smith, seconded by Commissioner Bernard. Further discussion on the consent agenda? Kevin. Commissioner Schrader. Aye. Commissioner Savas. Aye. Commissioner Bernard. Aye. Commissioner Smith. Aye. Chair Ludlow. Aye. Passes 5-0. And now our county administrator is going to give us the good news. So I do have several items to share with you uh, this morning. Uh, one <clears throat> is an update from our Hilltop Behavioral Health Center. Uh, this month, we uh, initiated a Spanish-speaking trauma recovery empowerment model known as TREM, T-R-E-M. And uh, TREM is a 24-week program for women who have experienced trauma in their lives. The group uh, teaches self-care, self-respect, and compassion for one's self and others. It's a culturally specific uh, curriculum that allows the center to expand its services in a way that uh, makes a difference in people's lives. So keep it up uh, uh, to our team at Hilltop. Uh, we talked a little bit earlier about uh, the uh, digester and spoke a little bit about the costs uh, related to that. And of course, I had in my own notes here, and it's really bears repeating, um, that we do have excellent news from our water environment staff. Uh, about uh, the solids handling capacity improvement project. Our staff and consultants have been working and have figured out uh, creative ways to reduce upfront costs of the project by literally tens of millions of dollars. I mean, they are making significant progress on this. Uh, and they have developed a phased approach to the solids capacity expansion project using a, a just-in-time delivery uh, of new facilities that will save significant amount of money. You'll be learning more about that as the development of the project continues. But as a result, I think over the long term, we can expect that that will have a significant positive impact on uh, sewer rates in both service districts in the future. So great job to our West staff for the work they're doing that. And I look forward to the opportunity uh, to, to have the board learn more about that as the proposal ripens up. Uh, then uh, the county has hosted two flood of information events uh, uh, over the past two Saturdays. One was in Welch's, and the other was right here at Red Soils campus. We had uh, members of the public come join us to learn how to protect their homes and property from flooding and winter storms. These two workshops were uh, jointly hosted by our Disaster Management Department and our Department of Transportation and Development. So I want to thank them for the work they've done uh, to do that. Then I received um, some uh, kudos from our citizen customers of our Resolution Services Department programs. And I kind of wanted to quote a few of the things that were shared uh, with me about that. This has to do with the family law mediation program that Resolution Services provides. And it says, thank you so much. This process is bearable, actually even enjoyable due entirely to your professional skill and your kindness and relaxed manner. It is a bit shocking to realize that an hour and a half spent hammering out details of the dissolution of life as we known it is filled with laughter and an overall sense of trust. I shall sing your praises to anyone I encounter in need of similar services. Uh, and another um, party from the same case, I presume the other side of the same case, said, 
It is a remarkable situation. I feel so thankful that we have found you at this time. I can't imagine a better atmosphere to discuss and communicate our way through this difficult process. I had approached this part of the path with significant trepidation and stress, and what I find in your office is a safe and pleasant place to talk and listen. Thank you. And I have one more to share. So this has to do with our parent education class uh, from parents who attend these classes. I found the presenters to be most helpful. The honest, assertive, and direct, and even humorous approach is refreshing and relatable. The presentation is thorough and extremely child-focused, which I found to be so important. Makes me feel proud of the county, actually, for having this be mandatory. I work with teens and families as a therapist in residential care, and I see so many problems. So this class offering makes me happy for the well-being of children. I just want to thank our Resolution Services staff for the outstanding work they've been doing. Very nice, Don. Thank you. It's time for Commissioner Communication. We'll start with Commissioner Savage. Well, it seems like a fitting time to talk about public involvement a little bit. And then earlier today, we, uh, I was able to at least point out that some of our volunteers and um, who help in the watersheds, for example, uh, provide a great service to Clackamas County, just as, just as our folks that are involved on a lot of our ABCs, our committees, advisory boards and commissions, and our CPOs and Hamlets and Villages. And I come from a place uh, where I'm a strong believer in, the, in the, our democratic process and public involvement. Um, and, um, you know, it takes whether even people come up here moment to, you know, for one issue or another and just come and speak to us. It takes a lot of courage. It takes a lot of courage to stand up and sit before folks and speak on a particular issue, um, just as it does to be part of a committee and ask a question um, and inquire about something. It's an intimidating situation, so I always appreciate people that are involved in there in the first place, but even more so those that, you know, have the fortitude at times to really ask questions, good questions. And, of course, when it comes to public resources and public dollars and so forth, our budget committee's members play a key role in that, and I just think they ought to be recognized for their fortitude and their willingness to give up their time, you know, for zero compensation. Um, and really acknowledge those that, again, involve themselves in some very complicated budgetary matters. And I think we should, um, you know, recognize that, recognize uh, that contribution and recognize their, um, their uh, uh, goals in trying to do the best with public resources and, um, and do what we can to help them. And I think that um, what actions we take uh, sometimes can be confused and maybe um, uh, might be misunderstood. And I know that there's a lot of people that are concerned about, you know, the future of uh, community, uh, community planning organizations, hamlets, villages, being on committees or asking questions or so forth. And I think they ought to be uh, encouraged and not discouraged from participating. All right. Thank you. Commissioner Bernard. On Tuesday, we went through our grant applications, and thanks to the hard work of staff, uh, we recommended grants to, of uh, totaling $250,000 all over the county uh, to those most vulnerable. Uh, yesterday, both John and I attended an eight-hour class on mental health first aid. Um, I recommend that everyone, if you have an opportunity to take this class, do it. We had some outstanding folks uh, providing that uh, education, uh, learned a lot, and um, I'm not going to pretend I've, I'm a psychiatrist or a psychologist, but um, I'm certainly more aware of, uh, you know, noticing and um, rec uh, perhaps uh, helping someone should they be in a mental health crisis. Um, went to the NRAC uh, annual harvest dinner, uh, which is uh, just outside of Wilsonville. It was a great dinner, a lot of great people, uh, volunteer and test products. Uh, we had some grapes that were really good. Uh, Oregon State now is making cheese, and you can buy it online, and uh, wow. all the cheese was very good. It was all very good. And I uh, wanted to remind people that at 2 p.m. Uh, on Saturday, 
uh, is a memorial service for Joe Crum at Putnam High School. Um, great man. I've actually uh, kind of forgot how long I've known him, but uh, the Clackamas Review used to be across the street from Bernard's Garage, and um, so I knew him when he was uh, selling ads for the Review right. a long time ago. And Jim, that's that's the twenty third. Oh, is it? Yeah, Sunday the, or Saturday Sunday. Oh, the twenty third at Rex Putnam High School at two o'clock. Yeah. Just want to get you know, people I, show up this you. weekend. Thank you. I've got to change that on my calendar. It's on our county calendar. Oh, it uh, is? Drenda put it there. Oh, okay. <clears throat> well, and, uh, the 23rd. Uh, anyway, I've known him a long time. The Clackamas Review, uh, you know, a small community newspaper. It used to be located across from the business. Uh, and actually, the f uh, former owner of the Clackamas Review used to work part-time at the garage when he retired. He uh, did a lot of the maintenance stuff, uh, pump gas, and looped cars, you know, just for something to do in his retirement. Huh. Uh, but uh, Joe uh, worked with him on many committees, even the, uh, on the chamber board. He was chair of the Ch North Clackamas Chamber of Commerce at one time, a great advocate for uh, the community, for the business community, and for youth. So he will be missed, and uh, thank you for catching that. Not a problem. Yeah, don't show up this weekend. Yeah, oh, oh, oops, I forgot the dog. Excuse oh, me. my gosh, yes. By the way, last week's dog was adopted, so uh, keep it up. Keep up the good work. This is a very vicious-looking creature oh, yeah. named Monty. He's an Austrian Australian Shepherd Border Collie mix that is a true diamond in the rough. He's a nice guy who just needs a good home. He's looking for healthy food, good exercise, a comfy bed, and lots of love uh, will make him shine. He walks politely on a leash, easy to handle, even for a bath. Boy, I wish my other dogs were. And he loves being with people. Let him be yours forever. For more information about Monty and other ador adoptable adorable dogs, please contact Clackamas County Dog Services at 503-655-8628. Uh, or visit them on the web at www.clackmas.us forward slash dogs. And thank you, Kevin, for reminding me. Is, is, it, is that a look? Did you see his eyes and that dog? I mean, just that look. Mm -hmm. yeah. Take me. I'm yours. I do that all the, every day. <laughs> Commissioner Schrader. <laughs> well, uh, thanks, folks. I also attended the NRAC annual harvest dinner, uh, and um, that's the Willamette uh, Experiment Station. Uh, it is run by OSU. Uh, Extension is there as well. And uh, the good news is that we own the land, but we have consistently supported agriculture by allowing them to lease it, to have it there, and to anchor agricultural uh, commodities and research up in this end of the, of the county. It was a great dinner. I think we had uh, all kinds of fresh produce, tomatoes, fresh lamb grilled chicken, you, you name it. And OSU, evidently, is now producing cheeses that you can order online, if you can kind of find that. They are actually uh, working in specialty cheeses. I thought that was uh, interesting and potentially have some uh, Christmas presents available for people with that. I think that would be great. Yeah, I think so. Made, it, made in Oregon, at least everybody I know. Uh, you know, who my family on the East Coast and folks in England and Austin, you know, made in the Northwest and made in Oregon is a huge, huge deal. And it's a good way to promote, <clears throat> promote things. Um, one of the other things I've been doing is I've been going to district meetings with the Association of uh, Oregon Counties. And I was in Lane County this past week. Uh, that included Benton, Lane, and Lynn County. And that is where they get together um, as folks, <clears throat> you know, with, with contiguous counties and talk about the issues that are relative to them. And uh, I'm going to have an opportunity. I can't go to the next one on Friday because I am uh, headed to my class, which is talking about exporting, where I can become a certified global professional, whatever that means. What it really is is a class on exporting, and it's a class uh, dealing with all the folks who uh, pretty much 
are resources you can go to if you're a business person to get to that next level of uh, exporting. So that's in preparation for an opportunity to do a trade mission to China. Uh, I'm very grateful for my colleagues for uh, thinking that's a good ideal idea. So, uh, and, and I do plan, I hope, to bring some tangible results back from that trip and I'm prepping with this, with this class. Um, other than that, I really don't have too much else to say except for the arts and culture activities in the county. Okay. There we go. First Fridays in Lake Oswego, Milwaukee, and Estacada. Plein Air Lake Oswego Artist Reception, the culmination of all of the art that was created in late September during Plein Air Lake Oswego, Friday, October 7th, 5 to 7 p.m. At, at 510 Museum and Art Space. Milwaukee, art, artists like music, salsa dancing, poetry reading, and more. Friday, October 7th, 5 to 9 p.m. in downtown Milwaukee and Estacada. Artist reception for Am Griswold's Turning Leaves, a clay and fiber show. Friday, October 7th, 6 to 8 p.m. at the Spiral Gallery. So you can have a busy Friday evening if you so desire, it seems. Nuts and Bolts Theater Company, Little Shop of Horrors. The famous musical about a man-eating plant convincing a mild-mannered flower shop clerk that finding fame fortune and true love is only a few grisly feelings away. Mm. Friday and Saturday, October 7th and 8th, 7.30 p.m. and Sunday, October 9th, 3 p.m. at Boring, the Damascus Grange Hall. Uh, I'm gonna put a pitch in even though it isn't here for 1776. It's still a musical Lakewood Theater is um, um, doing. It's a great musical. Uh, just a personal note on that. Uh, the young man that plays John Adams uh, actually is the son of a high school friend of mine, Darian Pierce. Uh, his mother is Lisa Pierce. We were in theater classes together at Fort Chester High School back in, uh, back in the late 60s. And when I promoted this on my Facebook, because I try to let people know, she replied, do you know that Darian is my son? And I said, well, when are you coming to Portland? And uh, Lisa, uh, the mom, she played Auntie Mame. She was the lead uh, in that play in high school, and I had a bit part uh, in, in that one. Uh, but but it was fun to connect with her, and uh, who'd, have, who'd have thought that after all these years, um, theater will follow you around no matter what. So. Thank you. Um, Do I get to talk? Uh, <laughs> Commissioner Smith, I'm sorry. Did I miss you all for Oh, yeah, yeah, I, I don't did. Have, I, I apologize. Don't have, uh, <laughs> yeah. Well, I have not attended these wonderful events because I've been very much under the weather, but uh, hopefully on the mend. But I had a great opportunity yesterday. Clackamas County was home to the national president for the VFW Auxiliary, and we hosted her down at our VFW post 1324 right on Tom Water Street yesterday for a luncheon. I was able to present to her, I was asked because I was a county commissioner and uh, a member of the VFW Post to present a proclamation to her supporting her efforts in uh, working and uh, assembling all the volunteers who work in hospitals and work with children and help our veterans be successful. It was very meaningful. Thank you. Well, as Jim said yesterday, we attended and were certified as mental health first aid practitioners. And um, I think it's important to note that, you know, so many people have mental difficulties, but, you know, it manifests itself in different ways with different people. Now, when I grew up in the 50s and 60s, that was the secret. You don't talk about those kind of things. But now it's so important that you do talk to people and those whom you love a presentation was made to us here about a month ago is ask the question. Now, what is the question? Well, the question is, are you contemplating suicide? But you don't phrase it that way. In fact, the acronym that was given to us yesterday is ALGE, A-L-G-E-E, -E, not like you'd normally spell ALGE. But this is the way you approach people whom you love and care about. And even for the practitioners, of course, just as strangers, and they approach it this way. The A is assess for risk of suicide or harm. Now with friends, you can simply say, how are you feeling? You know, you haven't been yourself. Are, are you worried about something? Let's have a cup of tea and talk about this. Uh, are you thinking about harming yourself? 
So that, again, to assess that often demands that you ask the question. And, and so that was emphasized. The L is listen non-judgmentally. Now that is so important with these people because they're fragile. And so you, you listen to them, you know, like my grandmother used to say, you got two ears and one mouth, use them in that proportion, especially in situations like this. You know, don't give judgment calls, make your comments short and listen more than you talk. The G is give reassurance and information. So reassurance that we're gonna work this out. This is gonna be okay. I think we have people who can help you. Um, that is so important to these people who are you know, languishing in usually self-doubt and guilt. Another, uh, the first E is encourage appropriate professional help. Because oftentimes people can't pull themselves out of this morass and uh, they are uh, looking for help in so many ways. Um, and the other E is encourage self-help and other support strategies. So often people, the way they see self-help is to self-medicate, which is not always the best move. Um, I've mentioned this before, but I think it's worthy of mention. My great interest in this is, is gathering tools. Uh, I didn't have the tools 30 years ago, and that's when I should have noticed the, all the signs that indicated my sister was in peril. And uh, she was a police dispatcher in Lebanon, Oregon for 20 years and uh, left that job for really ridiculous reasons and uh, spiraled into mental decay. She eventually took the 38 nickel, nickel plated 38 revolver that was given to her after 20 years of the Lebanon Police Department and ended it all. It was a tragic day in my life, and again, I wish the tools, uh, I would have known the tools were available, and certainly in the last 30 years, these tools have uh, changed greatly into this fantastic course that teach, uh, taught by Karen and Susie yesterday. But for, we are, it's mandatory with H3S workers that they attend this class. Some commissioners have said, yeah, we'll take that on too, and I'm so glad I went. A fantastic, caring people, great counselors from uh, Centerstone, um, but I, I think the county's doing a, a great job and it's almost like the drive for zero in traffic deaths. There's a drive for zero suicides as well. Um, men have a, um, a much more chance of completing that suicide, but women try it more often. Um, it has been said by Rich Swift, our Health, Housing, Human Services uh, Director, that nine out of the 10 people who are not uh, successful in committing suicide never try it again. And that's why the question needs to be asked by people who care about other people. Are you considering harming yourself? Let's talk about this. So there's your algae lesson for the day. And my final comment, I guess, is this. Experience is what you get when you didn't get what you want. Okay? <laughs> <laughs> Remember your mom used to say, well, think of the experience. <laughs> yeah, but I ate it. It hurt. So anyway, uh, there being no further business for the Clackamas County Commission this day, this meeting is adjourned.